Hi, and welcome to Answers News for March 26th, 2018. And um, it's Ken it's and it's Obi. March 26, 2018. Yes, it yeah, is. Yeah, it's almost. It really is. And we have a great studio audience today. So yeah. here you yeah. Hey, we have uh, we got a group here from a Christian school in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yep. Walnut do. Street Christian School. Did I get that right? Yeah. I got it right. Pennsylvania. And they said it in a town that I wouldn't understand the name of or something. <laughs> well, we haven't been there. There's what, 10 people in the town? Yeah, yeah about 10. <laughs> yeah, about 10. Some of, okay. So we always uh, just spend a little bit of time just talking about different things here to start with uh, because we are waiting for people to start this to get their notifications. Fluff, yeah. Takes a little bit of, yeah, fluff and stuff. Yeah, sort of just like they do in politics. And we're just waiting for people to get their notifications, get on board here. Uh, but uh, we always talk about a few, you know, little odd items or different items to start with. Uh, okay, so I'm getting on here. Get on and, there. oh, people are getting on there. We're already getting comments. Look at that. I'm already on. That yep, is incredible. I can see that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there we are. Hi, from Amish country in Indiana. There we are. Okay, so, Bodhi, do you want to... Has anyone here heard of Babylon Bee? Babylon yeah, Bee is a, area. well, it's a Christian satire, uh, satire. <laughs> yeah, it's Christian That's satire site. Uh, they write satire, but, but they like to do it uh, in a fun way, of course, yeah. associated with Christianity. So yeah. I've been featured on there before. I was featured again this week. Funny thing was, there were people who actually believed this happened when they saw the article. They had no idea it was from a satire site. They were getting upset with Kim, like, I can't believe he did this. How dare he? They were... They yeah, kind of going off at you a little bit out there. Yeah, they were talking about that, that I vandalized the Grand Canyon where it says millions of years, painted it out and put 4,400 years ago. And then I was arrested and apparently I escaped. And they're you actually... You're invisible. That's they're the funniest right? part of all. I can't see you escaping police custody. <laughs> Just saying. Well, you know what? I decided, seeing as there were even people that believed this, so I posted it on Twitter and on my Facebook and my post I said, and now on to the Smithsonian next. <laughs> yeah, there are people out there around the world getting upset with you, like, I can't believe he did this. Yeah. Hey somebody this is why somebody you have to pay attention. Somebody here's got a message for you, Georgia. Stop talking about nothing and get on to the issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's you doing that. That's okay. Me. Hey, this, hey th this was one of your favorite news items of the week. Well, okay. <laughs> So here, here is why, just like with the satire article we just talked about, you've got to be careful like, with what you're seeing and where it's coming from and really evaluate if it's true or not. So this supposedly is the Loch Ness Monster. This uh, is washed up on the shores of Georgia? Yeah. Georgia. Now here's the thing. No wonder if, you if, like this one. Yeah, <laughs> if I come across something like this, okay, and I can't figure out what it is by looking at it, I'm going to take a sample of this thing and, and like put it in a Ziploc or something. So people can look at the DNA. But do these people ever do that? No, right? They just take a picture they, and make they a They take big a picture and a video it. from a distance. So you really yeah, can't tell the detail. Yeah, you can't tell anything. It's just hype. And they, tr they try to make out of some what they call prehistoric monster or whatever, but you know, there are animals really like basking sharks or uh, other creatures that when they decay can yeah. end up having some sort of shape like that. So you've got to be really careful. Yeah, yeah, things decay in strange ways sometimes and so you don't know. Uh, actually, Dr. Pur Purdom at first thought it was one of those. Okay, this is another one I saw circulating on Facebook and people were like, What? Whoa, There's stuff on snake. Facebook that isn't true? Well, here's what it said. Okay, now... Okay, think of this. Is, this was what the, the little description was. World's biggest snake, anaconda, found in Africa's Amazon River. Where Just is the that. Amazon River? It's not Africa. It's, it's South, America, South America, people. Okay, right there's your indication. And the, the images are really blurred around the snake. It's obviously been photoshopped. Okay, so don't believe everything you see on social media, the internet. You know, that's my word to the wise. Yeah, so to be discerning. Here. There we are. We wanted to talk about <sighs> fake news to start with. So that yeah, not only is there fun. fake news in politics, uh, there's a lot of there fake news fake in other news areas everywhere. as well. So yep. yeah, definitely. Okay, so Dr. Purdom. Let's uh, start with some of these articles. Okay. Should a secular humanist serve as Navy chaplain? Absolutely not. So this is an article actually written by a senator from Mississippi because apparently the Navy is considering um, appointing a person who is an atheist to the position of chaplain. 
And um, no, which, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Atheists get on my Twitter all the time when I say that they have a religion, and they say they don't have a religion. So if atheists claim they don't have a religion, now they want to be chaplains. Inconsistent. Well, yeah. Inconsistent. They're consistently inconsistent. Yeah. But atheism <laughs> is a religion. It is. Yeah, it is a religion. But here, here's what's interesting: the chaplain corp. Uh, when, when it comes down to that, what it is is designed for people who have a godly worldview. And so when you put an atheist into that position, it's actually going against the very nature of the position at hand, and that's what's being disputed. But, but think about it. What would an atheist chaplain do? Someone come and said, Mr. Atheist Chaplain, I have a problem. That's hopeless. Um, I'm wondering about my life. It's meaningless. Mm -hmm. um, what's going to happen when I die? Um, yeah, <laughs> when you die, you're done. That's, that's it. it, the end of you. You might as well jump off a cliff right now. Can you imagine, yeah. Yeah. you know? If they were being consistent, but they're not most of the time, so that's, that's how they can get away with it. Yeah. But, but I hope that, I mean, the whole point of the chaplain corps and the whole point of this position was really for Christians to fill that position. And yeah, so if atheists want to have their own chaplain, that's fine. But really, this position needs to be filled by somebody who's mm -hmm. a Christian. Hey, hey you know how, how we just talked about the Loch Ness Monster? Yes. Somebody said here, isn't Ken Ham Scottish? <laughs> This ain't a Scottish accent, I'm telling you, mate. Okay. It's just I not. Am Scottish now. Hey? Oh, <laughs> trying, trying to throw some accents out there. not a Scottish accent. <laughs> yeah, you people need to work on understanding accents. Hey, did you, hear about that, <laughs> did you hear about that guy? Somebody mentioned it here. That built a rocket to mm -hmm. get in it to blast himself up, up, up into the atmosphere, so way up high, so he could take a photograph and prove the Earth's flat. Yeah, he, he said he was shooting himself up into the atmosphere flat. Yeah. Uh, guess what? Seriously. <laughs> guess what? When he got up there, he came back to Earth, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's we'll a very, probably find yeah. that article and report, had a report on it. He's a very we talked about him yeah. before. He's a very down-to-earth person yeah. now. Uh, yeah, there, there was an article on the Daily. <laughs> did you know we had an astronaut here at, this, at the ministry Your on this stage out. who showed us video on these screens that we have here when he was in the space shuttle, video of the Earth spinning on its axis. And uh, as, a, as a Christian uh, astronaut, mm -hmm. uh, here he was up there, and he was here giving yeah. his testimony, but he could show the earth as, as a sphere spinning yeah. on its axis. Imagine See, that. yeah, and you know, that goes back to the whole flat earth argument and things like that that we've seen pop up more and more. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, one of the things you have to be, be, be discerning again. You know, when people are using certain scriptures, they're yanking them out of context. They're finding mm -hmm. things that are uh, psalms or... Uh, metaphorical in a sense and then what they do is they try to take that as literal and you have to be very careful of that kind of stuff right. go back yeah. and read things in context according to the grammar and the style well you know when they talk about um, in the bible they say oh well, it says that the earth sits on pillars actually that particular mm -hmm. phrase comes out of Hannah's prayer mm -hmm. uh, in, right. in, in regard to Samuel and it, it's talking about spiritual pillars it's in mm -hmm. the context of her prayer and the spiritual pillars so again you got to be real careful the way you take those things yeah. Now okay. someone thinks you're British, just FYI. Okay. British? <laughs> yeah. Isn't Ken Ham British? We don't like the British. We're Australians. <laughs> All right. Australians Next. don't like it's anybody okay. else. They're yeah, just, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Particularly, particularly not Americans. That funny accent you have. Yeah. Yeah. All right. They, Next they need article. to watch more Pepper Pig. That's where you get the British accent right there. Oh, Peppa. <laughs> no. All right. Changing See, the people environment. with younger kids out there know what I'm talking about. Changing environment influenced human evolution. So this is the idea. They basically say humans may have developed advanced social behaviors and trade 100,000 years earlier than previously thought. So, but again, this, like, we don't agree with the time frame, but it, it's not surprising from a creation worldview, biblical worldview, that humans have always been smart. You know, they've always been doing these things and making tools and, and figuring out the world. So... <laughs> I this can see, I can see Babylon B playing off of this, saying, look, we found ancient Visa cards from yeah. when they were doing their trade. <laughs> but they, know, they, they could do something like that. Yeah, talking about the, the tool-making technologies and how things may have changed mm -hmm. due to um, volcanic upheavals, like what they had available to them, like they had more obsidian, more volcanic glass mm -hmm. available, which wouldn't be surprising in a post-flood world where there was still a lot of upheaval going on. Well, that's right. You've got to look at the big picture here. You have the flood. You have Noah and his family coming off the ark. You have the events of the Tower of Babel, and then people are spreading to different parts of the world. And so the, these people get down here in certain places in Africa. They're settled. They're using uh, what they can find to make certain tools and so forth. A volcano goes off, apparently. And then all of a sudden they discover obsidian, which is volcanic glass. And they start using that. For and they start trading with yeah. it and so forth. And they're like, whoa, there's a big shift here. They just try to throw it back here 100,000 years earlier than what they thought in an right. evolutionary time scale. So, 
but it's post, post See, battle. think about it too, as you said, Bodhi, as people went out from the Tower of Babel, some would live in caves, some would chop down trees and build ha houses out of, out of wood, mm -hmm. uh, others might uh, just stay in tents, mm -hmm. uh, some people would eventually be able to use iron and bronze, others would use stone tools, but for the evolutionists go and when they find all this evidence, they try to interpret it in a, in a Stone Age to Bronze Age to Iron Age right. sort of evolutionary sort of uh, yeah. way. But you know the other thing that gets me is, they find these, what, what look like axe heads, that they've been designed as axe heads. Think about this, a piece of rock, and, and it's, it's sharp and can be used as an axe head. And as soon as they see something that looks like it's been chipped away and, and designed in some way, immediately they say, obviously, oh, ev evidence of intelligence. Look at that, design, an axe head. But then the same scientists will look at DNA molecule, the most complex information code system in the entire universe and look at that and say, well, that's just chance. Oh, look, a rock that's been chipped. Intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. Big There's something wrong with that logic. Yeah. That's how they go. That's yep. how it goes. That's evolutionary logic. <laughs> All right. Uh, Christianity as default is gone, the rise of non-Christian Europe. So this is a survey that was done of some of the um, European countries and finding that, just like uh, many surveys that have been done here in the U.S., that Christianity is on the decline. It's not really, it's funny because they say like the Czech Republic and Estonia are the least religious countries. They're not the least religious countries, they're just the least Christian countries. That's right, because everyone religion. has a religion. Right, That's everyone right. has a religion. Atheism is heavily on the rise, the right. humanistic Well, religion. atheists believe all life arose by natural processes. That's their belief, so that's their religion. Mm -hmm. Right. Now see, you know, from a big picture though, I mean, yes, we're seeing a decline in Christianity in Europe, we're even seeing a decline of it here uh, in the United States. There's other parts of the world that we're actually seeing an increase. We're seeing yeah. an increase in Africa, we're seeing an increase in Asia. Uh, it's a number of these Western countries that mm -hmm. we're starting to see that decline. And some Europe European countries, it. like Poland and some of those, actually have quite a few that claim... Yeah, Lithuania um, was one of them. Yeah, yeah Christianity. Well, the, the, there's a warning here though, because What's happened in Europe? Europe had, a, had a, a big Christian influence. And think of the influence of the Reformation. And now we see that waning. We see other countries that have been away from Christianity. We see Christianity starting to increase in other countries. But in America, America is going the way of Europe. And that's a sad thing. And in Europe, church, church attendance is uh, very, very small. Uh, particularly with the younger generation, hardly any of them going to church. Yeah. And the same sort of thing is happening in America. And I believe it's the church's fault because we haven't stood on the authority of the Word of God. We we've, haven't taught generations how to defend their faith, how to give answers. Uh, that's why we have the Creation Museum and that's why we have the Ark Encounter. Mm -hmm. And it's great to see all these young people here today from uh, this yeah. Christian school learn answers to defend your faith so we don't end up like we do in Europe with so many doubting God's Word and walking away from the Christian faith. Well, you know, you did a couple of books uh, with uh, Britt Beamer. Britt Beamer is from America's Research Group, and we've done polls over here in the United States uh, taking a look at the state of the church, particularly the next generation, and we've now got three generations of statistics of kids walking away from the faith. And uh, they begin in a book uh, already gone, and they finish in a book ready to return. And these are powerful to show that, you know, in the latest generation, we're really seeing a decline in Christianity. I mean, more and more so. So. By the way, in this particular article, and all the articles, we put links at the top. Uh, we pin them right to the top of the comments, so you can go back and look at all the articles. Mm -hmm. It says, in Ireland, there has been a significant decline in religiosity. Well, they really mean Christian That's right. Christian. Decline. Darwinism's uh, taken over. Uh, over the past 30 years, and guess what? This year, I and Dr. Georgia Purdom, and the other speakers too, uh, but we'll be over in Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, and we're doing our Answers Conference over there uh, this year. So for those people living in Europe, yeah. you know, the United Kingdom, uh, we, actually, the, the conference we did in the United Kingdom uh, last year, there were people even from America who went over there, used it as an excuse to go visit and then go to our conference. <laughs> there you go, you, you want to go on a trip? There you but go. anyway, so we are reaching out to these countries and, around the world. And something too, I mean, it used to be popular to be a Christian, and um, like they say, as a default, as a norm, that's kind of gone, and that as a result, 
you know, because the, the dividing lines are greater now, you know, right? It's not popular to say you're a Christian, um, and it's not a cool thing anymore. And they said, you know, churches are smaller, but the people that are left are highly committed. And I think that's actually a really good thing. It's um, cool that some the, of the people, people wow. yeah, that are there are really committed, and then they can see really what truly is a Christian and what is not a Christian. You know, that, that I think also, that's a good thing. That also fits with the fact that one of the one of the trends I've noticed in America is when we get to the Bible Belt areas. Uh, compared to, say, going to California or the East Coast. When we go to California, the East Coast, the people who come to our conferences are so excited and they buy lots of resources and they're really on fire Christians. When I go to the Bible Belt areas, I just find a lot of apathy. We get actually a better response in many ways from on fire Christians in the more pagan areas of America. Because there, if you're a Christian, you're going to have to stand uh, against the tide. That's right, and they want and, to know how to do that. And you're going yeah. yeah. to be noticed. So you have to be prepared to defend your faith. You need to be an on fire Christian. And it's funny too, atheist Richard Dawkins uh, tweeted about that particular article we just talked about. And he was saying how... He doesn't necessarily think that it's a good thing that Christianity is declining. Even though he hates all religion, he says is, Islam is on the rise. And because it's a more violent religion, that that's a bad thing. <laughs> that that's a bad thing. So yeah. it's kind of interesting to hear his view on that as an atheist. Yeah, but yeah, as an he, atheist... He actually likes he, the fact that Christianity was there yeah. shielding them from, from other stuff. Well, he also says he's an equal religion Bad. basher. But that's not true because yeah. he doesn't bash his own religion of that's atheism. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It's a devil standard. You know, it actually says in this article, it says, uh, you know, the Muslim birth rate is higher than the general population and they have a much higher religious re retention rate. But, you know, if you, if you actually look at that religion, if you leave the religion, you're required to be put to death, really. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I think a lot of people... Well, are, are and the sad thing is, many others in the population outside the Muslim community are just aborting their children. They're murdering them mm -hmm. in really their mother's are. wombs. Massive yeah. numbers of Which them. brings us to this next article. Yeah. Yep. Crisis pregnancy centers have the right to remain silent. So this is about a California law that has been on the book since 2015. They basically said if you're a crisis pregnancy center, which are usually, um, you know, run by Christian organizations or, or Christian churches, that they must say, hey, guess what? The state of California also offers immediate, free, or low-cost access to comprehensive planning, family planning services, prenatal care, and abortion for eligible women. Whoa, so, here's, so, so they're saying yeah. that crisis pregnancy centers are forced to advertise abortion centers. Yes, they're forced to advertise by the mm. state of uh, California says they must advertise them. Now, what would happen if they passed a law and said all abortion centers, like Planned Parenthood, had to advertise to people that you can go to pro-life centers and learn how to uh, have, have a baby adopted or to uh, have an ultrasound to see that it's totally human. How, how, what would happen if well, they passed a law well, like yeah, that? What, what if they were forced to you know, put links to Answers in Genesis right there? You know, big, bold letters in all these different languages. Yeah. Yeah. You see, there's an inconsistency. It's a one-way one -way street with a lot of these liberals, isn't it? It's just one way, way forcing the their views on the culture. Well, and it's coming yeah. to the Supreme Court. So that's why this is an issue, because it's coming there to say that it's violating the free speech of those centers. They shouldn't right. have to advertise abortions because if it's up to the government, the state government, to decide what should be said, well, what happens if you get a pro-life government in there? I mean, and they say all the abortion centers have to advertise the, the crisis That's pregnancy right. centers. You know, they wouldn't definitely would never want that. So it's, mm -hmm. it's problematic all I, the way around. Hey, there's a comment here, probably from one of the students here. They said, hi from the second row in Legendary Hall. <laughs> This is Legacy, Legacy Hall. Legacy Hall. But I think it is, le <laughs> I think it is no. legendary that three it's of us legendary. are here together today. And this, so we'll rename it. Leg I think it's a great, great new name for the Second Hall. Second row, all right. Welcome. Yeah, I won't say his name, Larry. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> At least you're not saying last name. All right. Women co women's College instructs professors not to call students women. All right, so this is at Mount Holyoke. Um, in Massachusetts, it's a all women's college. Wait a minute, it's an all women's college. It's an all women's college. But they can't. But you can't call. They have to call them students, not women. But don't they call it a women's college? Yeah. Should they just switch it to students college? No. Well, no, because you can only get in if you're biologically female or if you're biologically male but identify as a female. So they agree that there's only two genders, male and female. Yeah. Yeah. So, Which goes against the very point that they're trying to make. So it's open to everybody, really. 
Well, I mean, no. Facebook says there's what 71 genders or whatever according what, to. Wasn't it founded by a woman? Not. Wasn't it founded by a yeah, woman? Yeah, it was founded by a woman. So that it just goes to show you cannot They're be so, consistent so inconsistent. with this. It's totally impossible to say you accept all genders or there's no such thing as gender or it's fluid and then have gender designations at all. Okay, right. so I mean, let me. They're trying to be inclusive at this exclusive. Here's their, ad, here's their admission policy for the women's college. Any biologically born female can apply for admission, but only a biologically born male who identifies as other, they, z, and when the other, they, identify includes woman, and one who identifies as a woman. So basically, woman doesn't you don't necessarily understand that? mean woman. Well, then why does man have to mean man? Why couldn't they just say be a man and go in there? I mean, you know, if they're going to be so inconsistent, anything... Well, it says they want to promote a gender-neutral environment, but how is it gender-neutral if you're saying the there's The point only, of a women's co college yeah, I mean, <laughs> kind of goes against that. It oh. totally defeats the whole point of having a women's college. I don't yeah. understand it. And yet on the school website, you know what they say on the school website? Imagine if every day were International Women's Day. Meet Mount Holyoke. Yeah. So when you come to Mount Holyoke, it's International Women's Day because there's only women here, but there's not. It's only Students' Day. It's only yeah, Students' day. day. It's International day. Students' Day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And and Th you don't, does your mind start to go? It and is you don't. The world yeah, you don't say on. he or she. You would say, oh, there's a she and there's a z. Or they. Or they. Or they is. But what if they don't want to be identified as they? Yeah. What? what I just said they. What if they want? What if they don't want z? What if they want to be a woman when they're not? What if? Yeah. Okay, I'm yeah, confused. Exactly. <laughs> Well, they, they are too, obviously. And yeah, I tell you what it's an be. example of. When you abandon the absolute authority That's of the right. word of God, yeah. anything goes. Mm -hmm. And just to remind you, our studio audience, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, God said he made man in his image. In the image of God he made he, them. Male and female he created them. And then in, Genesis, in uh, Matthew 19, yeah, when, 10, yeah. when Jesus was asked about marriage, he said, haven't you read, he which made them beginning made them male and female, a man and a woman, mm -hmm. and, and said, this is the reason the man shall leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife, and they'll be one flesh, which is what is said in Genesis 2.24, because God made man from dust, put him to sleep, made the woman from his side, mm -hmm. male and female, man and woman, and that's the first marriage, a man and a woman. Could you imagine trying to apply some of these principles to languages? Because, you know, English, you know, we have masculine and feminine, uh, you know, pronouns right. and things like that. Right. French is like that. Hebrew you know I mean? has masculine and feminine. Yeah, I mean, you have yeah. la, le, you True. know, be, being masculine and feminine. All that stuff would break down to be, the languages would be meaningless. Yeah. You I can't even know. make sense of well, stuff. Somebody on here said it. Satan is the author of confusion. <laughs> that is why. Well, yeah, and I wonder who's behind very all good this. point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Someone so, said if they don't want to be identified as they, then we can identify them as Scottish. Some, <laughs> somebody, somebody really wants to talk about the Scottish today. I on, guess. On okay. Well, and Scottish. then we lead to this next one. Right. Gender fluid baby names are on the rise. So basically, um, because gender is now considered fluid and you don't know what a child is going to identify as as they get older, parents have decided to try to name their child something that could be either a male or a female name. So, so here's I mean, the there are some names that kind of would go right. either way. I mean, I knew, Avery. I knew, yeah, Avery is here in the audience. She takes over. If one of us are away, Francis yeah. news. So, is, she, what, what, is that gender neutral? What is it? Sure. Say, yeah. <laughs> she's our she's our token millennial when yeah. she's here, because yeah. uh, we always like to have a token millennial now and then. So we we Max. do that. I give that perspective. Them, eight, uh, but here's the thing. Ryan. You know, when I grew up, there were, there were kids that had the name Tony, and Tony can be a girl's name, Tony can be a boy's name. Here's the problem today. The reason they want these, what seem to be, you know, names can be used for either, is because they, because they, they want to make um, the, the, the point that they believe in gender neutrality mm -hmm. instead of male and female. It's almost like today it's better that we actually choose a very female name or a male name right. to make the point that we're standing on the fact that there are two genders, male and female. Yeah. What, what an interesting, so complex we kids, situation we should, we're in. You know, like if I have a little boy, I should name him boy yeah. or male <laughs> yeah. or female girl. I well, mean, that, and it's, be pretty it's so sad because to hear these parents say, you know, this one parent said, I like that she feels she has options and knows she'll be accepted by us no matter what. Their child is three. 
Okay, big you picture know, here. I mean, this whole article is predicated on the on the fact that there are male and female, a binary system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you realize that? Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. And yet, here we are in a culture saying, well, it's not binary. You can have seventy-one it's different fluid, yeah. genders. Well, at least that's what it is today. Um, it'll probably change tomorrow. Hey. Hey, Bodie, I thought we, we should do something here. Um, somebody made this comment. I believe there is gravity. Doesn't mean it's a religion. Stop calling atheism a religion. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate uh, gravity. This is my watch. Good thing you caught that. Now, demonstrate atheism. <laughs> mm -hmm. See, atheism is That's a right. belief. It's, and, it's and a belief atheism, that there's no God. Atheism is a materialistic religion. Now, what does that mean? It means that you view that all things that are in existence are material. Um, that would be matter, energy, things like that. Um, in other words, God does not exist in an atheistic worldview. That's why there is the absolute statement, there is no God in atheism. Now, if it's materialistic, well, what's the mass of logic or a conclusion? or truth, or knowledge, those things can't exist in an atheistic worldview. You have to get rid of that religion, come over and borrow from a Christian worldview, right. just to say those things exist. Yeah, for, for but, atheists to even talk, to talk logically, mm -hmm. uh, use... For him to make that conclusion, well, he had, to borrow from, he had to borrow from a Christian <laughs> worldview. Yeah. yeah. See, they, a lot of people come up and they want to say, oh, well, I don't, I don't belong to a religion. Well, then why are you opposing my religious claims? The sheer fact that you're talking religion proves otherwise. Yeah. yeah, good point, good point. Somebody said they're going to name hey. their male baby Schwarzenegger. Yeah, somebody said here, I'm going okay. to name my girl, I'm a girl. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, let's go on to the next one because you, this is... Hey, I oh. noticed something in here. Uh, you know, some of the top female names and top boys' names, you know, here for 2016 rankings, which is what they were looking at here. Well, one of them was Emma, Olivia for the boys, Noah. Do you recognize any of those names? Yeah, we, we have 16 grandchildren, and we have one named Olivia, <laughs> one named Emma, one named Noah. Yeah. They're contributing to it. Uh, that's true. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Is Bo what is Bodhi? Is that a... You know, I, I suspect that Bodhi could be a boy's name or a girl's name, but, you know, I've, I've met a lot of people who've named their cats and dogs Bodhi, in honor of me. Uh, okay. Thank All right, you. moving on. <laughs> this next one we had to do for Karen because he likes the platypus. Platypus milk might save us from bacterial infections, and that's not even the best thing about them. So basically, the, they found a protein in platypus milk. They've named it Shirley Temple because it has... All these, I want to like, order she had, Temple. Now, if you don't remember, Shirley Temple had all these really cute Little ringlets, curls. and yeah. the protein has all these ringed-like structures. But they think it's a, it's some sort of, it's an antibacterial protein. Now they don't know yet; it hasn't been confirmed. But they're hoping it might fight. It might, we might use that same type of protein in uh, to fight bacteria that have become antibiotic resistant. So it's because it's very unique. We don't find it anywhere else in the animal kingdom. It's it's totally unique to platypus. See, Australians are unique. Mm -hmm. well, I've always said true. that. Yep. Yeah. We are so, a unique so here's group. What I want to know. Hey, hey, you know what? Who's going to volunteer to to milk the little rascals? <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't even milk them. I know. They just secrete it, it the milk. They actually from their they sort of they sweat it. They sort of sweat, them sweat the milk out. Sweat milk. <laughs> Yeah, they sweat the milk out. You know, you just. Look. I learned more about platypuses in this article than I needed. Yeah, yeah when, I so up, you, you when I grew up, when I grew up, yeah, when I grew up, we said platypie. See, I looked that up. I, I was like, is it platypie or platypus? It's like, apparently, yeah. depending Either on which one. dictionary you're looking at, both of them are correct. There's also platypodes. Platypodes. There's also plural for platypie. Platypie. Platypus. Pusses? Who cares? What? How many times do you use it? Hey, word? you know what the the. The rest of the art, platypi is correct because that's what I was taught in Australia, okay. in Australian schools, right. by Australian school these. teachers. Hey, so platypi has to be right. Platypuses doesn't make sense. Hey, you know, the rest of the article actually talks about how unique the platypus yeah. is but, and, and how confusing the platypus is. Actually, you know it's my favorite animal? I know it is. That's why it's I my favorite it. animal mm -hmm. because I think it's so confusing to the evolutionist. If you think about it, bill like a duck, beaver like tail, hair like a bear, web feet like an otter, claws like a reptile, lays eggs like a turtle, feeds its young on milk like a mammal, has spurs like a rooster, and poison like a snake. Yeah, I don't think you can mean, it senses its it, prey it, by detecting electric fields. It if it evolved, eyes. if it evolved, it evolved from everything. Yeah. <laughs> that's why well, I think, that's what I think every time an, I think every time an is, evolutionist looks at a platypus, right. I think God right. smiles. Where do you, where I think do you he made it, it just for them. Right? Because they actually had to invent yeah. a whole new a, a monotremes, which is what there's only uh, yeah, them and the echnida yeah. um, that are part of that because they lay eggs, but they're mammals. So they're so <laughs> it is very unique. It's cool. It's a cool it's animal. Hey, somebody yeah. said somebody said here they had a 
platypie for dessert last night. A plate of pie. Oh, they beat me to that one. Oh, good pun. on them. <laughs> okay. There are, All right. We so got some very creative people on here. Somebody said they remember the platypus from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I remember that. So you, you were too what, what, old. Oh, you, yeah. oh, you know what would make sense that you watch Mr. Rogers? Because yeah. you're so boring sometimes. <laughs> oh, hey. You have to take your I shoes off. I remember from Mr. Rogers. All right. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Surreal photos of India's living root bridges. These intricate living structures take 15 to 30 years to complete. So this is in, um, in areas of like Bangladesh and mountainous um, sort of areas where these, this certain people group, the Kazi, have developed a way to basically link across these really streams and things like that that can get really filled up when they have the monsoon seasons and, and have a lot of rain and everything. And they, they basically weave together the roots, the roots yeah, of these grow. trees um, with um, other bamboo planking or something mm -hmm. like that to create these roots. And they're just showing you one, of them, one example here. So they're living, they're living bridges. Yeah, yeah. they're living They bridges. even have on, on page two, if you look at the article, and link on it later and look at it, there's a double-decker bridge. And yeah, I was, I, yeah, a I double-decker bridge. And I was thinking, the Brent Spence Bridge here in, in between Cincinnati and northern Kentucky, it's a double-decker bridge over the Ohio River. Mm -hmm. They've been talking for years and years about the need to replace it. We've got the solution. Yeah, it only takes 200 years to weave enough yeah, branches to go yeah, across out. But, <laughs> Not enough roots. We but, just have to grow the right trees there and keep the roots <laughs> going out. But these things are an engineering growing. marvel. They really. really are. They're fascinating. And you know what? The older they get, the more sturdy they get. They, they, it's, it's fascinating. Yeah, and I think as I drive mm -hmm. across our potholed roads around here, you know, they don't hold up very well in bad weather. But these things... That's just, they well, get you know, stronger. I, I don't know if you want to drive your semi across these. Well, I'm not arguing that, but for what they right. do, yeah. walking across hey, them, I think this, it makes sense. This a shows lot of the sense. brilliance of it man's is. mind. Yeah. yeah. And, and how we can, you know, we've been given dominion over the earth, and, yep. you know, they, they do fascinating things like this. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. So, right. Hey, you realize we've run out of time? We'll have to do and the rest of them time. on uh, th it's Thursday. Is today Monday? Today's Monday. Today's oh, somebody Monday. said they drink platypus milk. I don't think so. so. so Maybe there's a brand milk of milk called Platypus Well, they say milk. they're crunchy moms, so that means they're, I don't like, think so. cool. So I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> All right. Um, All right. We'll, we'll save that one for later. So, we, <laughs> we're, milk. so the three of us, for those that are here, we're going to go out yep. into the lobby yep. there and meet people. Okay. If you want to come up and meet uh, anyone, if there's someone you don't want to meet, just let them know, uh, and uh, we'll be out there. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. We'll see you All on Thursday, too. God bless too. you guys. Thank you so much.